The bridge opened on the 10th of June, 2000, attracting thousands of people and the media. But as the people poured over the bridge, it was clear something was wrong. The bridge was wobbling from side to side. I got a phone call midday saying we have a problem. And uh, my first reaction was the same as everybody else's. Well, all bridges move a little bit. There's an exaggeration going on. But, but uh, Roger said, uh, no, no, this is, this is real. And so I came down early afternoon and you saw it and you think this, this, this isn't real, this can't be happening. It was uh, very disappointing. Uh, we were witnessing the bridge performing in a way that we hadn't anticipated. We'd done lots of work to try and understand its behavior. We felt that we understood it very well and here it is doing something completely unexpected. The engineers had tested every element of the bridge from the cables and bolts to how the bridge would behave. Regulations and codes of practice give engineers basic design guidelines. These codes are based on years of experience and look at how different vibrations can affect a bridge. In 1941, the effect of wind-induced vibrations was fully understood after the Tacoma Narrows Bridge in America collapsed under a strong persistent wind. But it's not just the elements. Soldiers marching can create sufficient vertical vibration to bring a bridge down. Before crossing, they're always ordered to break step. Break step! Signs on some bridges still bear witness to this danger. As engineering advances, the bridge building codes are continually updated. Arab researched beyond the requirements of the codes studying pedestrian vibrations in detail. With regard to pedestrians, we did a lot of work on vertical vibration, that is, as a pedestrian walks over the bridge or a group of pedestrians, what kind of force, repetitive force, do they put into the bridge? Arab's calculations followed the codes in assuming that people walked randomly and the major force they generated was vertical. But on the Millennium Bridge, something unexpected happened. People changed the way they walked in reaction to the movement of the bridge. To balance themselves, pedestrians spread their feet apart, creating a significant lateral, not vertical force. More importantly, the people's reaction was almost identical. Everyone stepped the same way at the same time, creating a synchronized rather than random force. The frequency of this force matched the natural frequency of the bridge motion of the crowd was synchronized with the motion of the bridge and that's actually proved to be a very important observation. We also observed a, a quite bizarre behavior that we could control the level of vibration by limiting the number of people but it was far from a linear relationship. We noticed that it was almost an on and off situation that either the center span particularly either it was vibrating or it was it was fine. The vibration developed when a large number of people picked up the slight movement all lightweight bridges exhibit and locked into it. Lock-in is the term that we've used to describe the fact that people, as they walk over this moving surface, sense that movement and adjust their gait to take account of it, to stay up, to keep their balance. Lock-in seemed to be a problem no one had come across before. But Arab then identified two bridges that appeared to have a similar problem one in Japan and one in France. However, reports of the problems on the Solferino Bridge in Paris were confused and they did not identify the cause. In Japan, engineers did publish their understanding of the phenomenon, but in a journal of seismic engineering, unlikely to be read by bridge engineers. The body of knowledge hadn't disseminated beyond those people and Arabs didn't know about it, I didn't know about it, and specialist checking engineers who are the most likely people to have known about it, didn't know about it. As news of the bridge spread, Arab received reports of other bridges of all shapes and sizes that had wobbled. This meant that any bridge with a low natural frequency carrying large numbers of people could begin to sway. 
clearly the phenomenon was not caused by the Millennium Bridge's innovative design.